Hi everyone, this is Udi from IO Lama and today I'm gonna to build a sound silencer. So, here it is. And the way that this works is that we calculate any incoming sound wave, we invert it and then we detect the phase. And by detecting the phase, we can create a totally inverse sound. I'm just kidding. The way that we do this is that if we detect sound, we actually create a stronger sound, which make the person who first did the sound go away. So think for example about a noisy neighbor or an annoying kid or a blabbermouth on YouTube. When the sound silencer detects continuous noise, it will create its own noise and there you go. So let's see what's in here. I'm using this TM1638 board, which is called Leaden Key, and I just love it for the futuristic look of it. It did give me some grief and I'm gonna go over that while I discuss the code. But first, let's see how the thing works. So I'm going to attach it to a battery. I'm just using this Xiaomi power bank here. And it turns on and it says in its sequence. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, reduce the sensitivity so it doesn't start. And S1 gives us a uh, quick help. So that's help, volume, song, credit, play stop, and sensitivity. Um, so volume cycles through the volume. Um, here I can select one of four audio files. This is just the credit, so it says IO Llama. Um, that's actually playing, but the volume is viewed. Let's increase the volume. I'm sorry, let's... So this one, as you can see, is playing and it counts the time. It counts the time until the nightmare is over. This is currently set for 20 seconds. Um, and S6 determines the sensitivity and I'm gonna put it on 60. And I'm gonna put it on 50 and I'll explain this later. So this is the leaden candy, it controls the device. Let's see what else we have here. Obviously we have an Arduino board and this is the Arduino Nano. We don't actually need that many ports. Uh, I've mounted it into an IO shield and this is just uh, because I'm lazy. Uh, breadboard will work just the same or even soldering if you're sure that this is your final configuration. Then I'm using the same um, red MP3 player that you know from our real box project. And the reason that I use this is A, because it comes with a little speaker, and as you saw, the, the speaker is pretty loud, but also because there's a little port here, and you can connect this port, this, to an external speaker, and you can create pretty, pretty serious noise with this one. Again, I have uh, an SD card here, so I'm just using this little card. And the last component here is a sound sensor. This sound sensor will go from 0 to 512, and that actually says how much noise uh, the sound sensor is picking up. So, this is the box that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna cut, cut some places for the leaden, maybe like this, for the leaden key, the speaker, the external speaker port, and the little microphone. So, let's go hook it all up and come back here. Thank you. 
So this box, we're not going to be dealing with any sound wave phase inversion or anything like this. This is all very standard code. And I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the top, uh, then I'm going to my setup and main and take a look at the big picture. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down and look at each function and what it achieves. So let's go ahead and start. We're using two libraries. We're using the red MP3 library, which is the same library that we've used for the Riddlebox project. And we're using the TM1638 library, which controls the lead and key component. Let's go down. This is just a part list and includes. This is the sound detector part. And uh, this, we're just using a, a small sound detector microphone. We have, of course, a digital pin and our analog pin. The sound sample goes between 0 and 1024, or actually 1023. So we have the median of that, and that's 512. Um, and then we have three parameters that control the way that we sample sound. Samples to average are, is the amount of samples that we're using to actually make one real sample. So every time that we sample, we sample five times, we average that, and this is what we call the actual sample. Sample distance and times to sample control the amount of time where we want to make sure that there is noise. So when you multiply them by one another, you get a certain period of time. So for example here, the sample distance is one second and we're sampling three times. So that means we want to make sure that there is noise for three seconds before we actually say, hey, it's noisy here. Um, if you want to make the sample shorter, of course, you can sample every half seconds and sample twice. Um, uh, then you run the risk that every arbitrary noise will trigger the device. Or if you want to be absolutely sure, you can measure eight times and have three seconds between them. That'll give you about almost half a minute of, um, of uninterrupted noise, and then you know, okay, half a minute, that's noisy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something about it. That's the lead and key module, and the, of course we have our pins, and then we have some parameters and macros to actually control the panel. It's a very cool uh, steampunk-looking panel. Let's go on. That's the red MP3 player. And uh, one interesting thing is that I couldn't figure out how to tell how many songs are on the card. So what I've done is that I've matched the MP3 number of songs is four, and actually I'm going to have four songs on the card. Uh, if you have more songs, then you have to update this. If anybody knows how to pull, how to extract the number of songs from the cards, please let us know in the comments. Um, then every time we trigger, every time we trigger a play, we play for three seconds. Of course, if you want to create some annoyance, maybe you want to play for 20 seconds, maybe you want to play for more. I don't know. This is up to you and your neighbors. Um, then we initialize the module, we initialize the lead and key, and then this is our setup. It's very trivial. We initialize the two uh, pins for the sound sensor, so the analog pin and, um, and the digital pin. We initialize our serial port, and we clear the display, and we just say, hey, we're initializing. We're doing this in a blocking way for three seconds. And this is our loop. It's again, it's super trivial. So if we detect noise, then we wait a little bit and we hit play on the MP3. So that means that, hey, neighbors, or hey, whatever it is, you're making too much noise, uh, we're fighting back. Um, then we've offset uh, the MP3 function to millis, so it's not blocking, and MP3 loop this with that millis. Then we look at the keys and we want to see were there any keys pressed. If no keys were pressed, then this will be zero and we can, uh, we, we will do nothing. So let's go over the keys. Um, if we've pressed the first button, we're just showing a very trivial help. I'm going to show that at the bottom. It's at the end of the code. If you press the second button, then we cycle through uh, the volumes in increments of 20. So somewhere between zero and 100, five levels of noise. The third button cycles between songs. The fourth button just gives a short credit message. Um, it's blocking, I'm sorry, but it's just so IO Llama on the, on the little LED panel. The fifth button starts and stop playing. Button number six cycles through sensitivity. Button number seven does nothing, and button eight is just there for debug purposes. Uh, this is what I use to make sure that the lead and key module is working correctly. I just left it in there for the bug. Then we're getting a key. We're looking if a key was pressed. If it was pressed, we'll get to it in the next cycle. And we're refreshing 
the user message. And again, we're using the Millie's mechanism to do so. Let's see, this is how we know if a key was pressed. So we query the model, was anything pressed? Um, we're doing a quick thing to light the specific LED where the specific button was pressed. This is a good user feedback. If any of the keys were pressed, we're gonna wait for 200 millis and um, exit the loop. And then when we reach the loop again, we're asking, hey, were any keys pressed? And then we do a switch and act accordingly. MP3 toggle uh, just starts and stop the player for the MP3. Uh, obviously, MP3 play plays the music and outputs a little message. And as you can see, the song that we're using is gonna be the song that we keep in the song cycle. Uh, MP3 stop, that's the same, it stops playing, displays a message. Volume step cycles through the volume. So we just cycle between uh, one and five. So 20, 40, 60, and so on until we reach 100. And again, we display a message. The song step again, we cycle through songs. So depending on how many songs we have, this is what we cycle through to decide the song. And again, we output a message. Sensitivity, these are all just cycle loops between uh, very trivial parameters. Maybe it would have been a better thing to do this with one function and uh, in the case that says what parameter we're, we're cycling through, but it's, it's all the same. Sample noise is actually an interesting function. And there's a thing here. So when the leaden key module was displaying a message on the LED, my readings were off. So when we're sampling noise, the first thing is that we're asking is, are we showing any message? And if we are, then we're just gonna return uh, that there is no noise. This just keeps one sample. It's not a big deal for this kind of application, but if this was something that has to do with health or heartbeat, of course, I would have to figure out a different mechanism. Here, I just go around it. For sampling the noise, I just collect a few samples of noise and average them. Here you see that the way I shift from 1024 to minus 512 to plus 512. Um, and then I just uh, make sure that it's a positive value and I return what's the noise. Is noise is the function that actually decides, is it noisy right now? So, and again, I'm using uh, millis here. If, if the song is playing, there is of course no point in, in making a query. There is noise, we are making the noise. So of course there is noise. Uh, and I just say, no, there is no, no noise because I know that there's noise that I'm generating. Uh, then I'm making sure that there's the time that I wanted between the two samples that, I, that I've reached that time frame and I'm taking a sample. So this is a uh, noise level equals sample noise. And I'm just reading the ambient noise from the environment. And to keep a collection of samples, I use an array. And every time that I get a sample, I push all the samples back one slot and I put the new sample in the new slot. Right here, I'm asking, hey, is it noisy right now? And the way that I do that is by asking, is, my, is the noise sample bigger than my threshold? Usually sensitivity is going from, you know, zero is no, not sensitive at all and 100 is super sensitive. Here in the code, we're doing it the other way around. So maybe sensitivity is not the right word. Maybe it should have been tolerance, but it does the same. So if we go above the sensitivity level, then uh, we say, yeah, it's noisy right now. So this is where we go over the samples. And right here, we combine the samples. We see over the last X samples, was it noisy? And if we have, if all of them were noisy, then we're definitely in a noisy environment. And, you know, that means we're noisy. This is just, uh, and then we put some, some uh, debug information to the console and some information to the user. We, this is the millis mechanism. Then we return, did we or did we not have noise? Display message, this is the mechanism that I use uh, for displaying a message. So it gets a message and the time to show that message. And I'm setting uh, a timer. The message timestamp is actually the timer. Play message, refresh message is I'm looking, hey, has the timer passed? If it has passed, then I'm killing the message. I'm doing a clear display. MP3 loop is again using the millis mechanism. And then until the timer has passed, I'm playing. If the timer has passed, I'm stopping. Then if I'm playing, I'm letting the user know that I'm still playing and I'm telling them how much longer they need to suffer. Um, and show help is just a trivial help. So it shows uh, for two seconds, it says, it shows what each of the buttons do. So it's help, volume, song, credit, play stop, and sensitivity. This is it for the code. And I hope you're gonna have fun when you go over the code and understand what it does. I just wanted to show you how the finished box looked like. So here we have the leaden key module. 
going to open the box. We have the Arduino Nano and the Shield. We have the uh, speaker, the MP3 player, and the microphone is right here. I added another hole here, so I have a comfortable way to get a cable out. And I'm going to start it with this battery here. So as you see, we initialize, we have the initial sequence, and do you see this little blinking light? This one is telling me how many noisy samples I have. If I talk for a little bit, then I'll get three samples in a row, like this. Oh yeah, I set it for three seconds, so it's not uh, too much, but you understand how it works. So this is our help function. Volume. Let's see how loud it gets when I play. Yeah, that, that's pretty loud. This is our song selection, and I have four songs in the card. The credit message, obviously. This is the play stop. And finally, the sensitivity. So right now you can see that when I'm talking like this, I'm not hitting the sensitivity. They all stay at zero. But if I lower the sensitivity to 10, so right now, even when I'm talking at a very low volume, uh, I'm seeing that some of the samples are picking up. That's it for the box. I hope you enjoyed. Hit like, share, subscribe all the buttons that you can see and I'll be seeing you in the next video.